What's going on, you words? Mr. Waffles here, and today I'm bringing you guys uh, MP that you know you guys probably all know. It's really good. Sorry, I said MP, but leader that you guys all know. It's really good, and um, it's no surprise that he's good. But this is my take on it, and uh, I'm introducing to you guys my mono yellow non Ginyu Golden Freezer deck. Now you might wonder, well, there's Ginyu Forest guys in there. Uh, what I mean by non Ginyu is um, the whole focal point of the deck isn't to spam like Ginyu Force allies and uh, finish it off with the Elite Force Captain Ginyu. Um, the reason I kind of strayed away from the Ginyu Force build is um, mainly because it loses really hard to like, um, I, at least I felt, to, to board presence and board wipes because after a while your Ginyu Force can't hit for anything and you know, you're just sitting there until you drop the Ginyu, which you know, uh, if it's since Ginyu is a drop six, if you're going against other decks, um, let's say red, and they drop their Champa, you know, they can just blow up your board. So I, I felt it was too vulnerable to kind of save up for that one turn when you could kind of be utilizing a bunch of different stuff in the meantime. So um, basically, I'll just go going through the deck. So we start off with, and I got, I'll, again, I'll explain all my choices and um, everything like that. So we had the four Mecha Frieza, the Return of Terror. This card is absolutely busted. I'm surprised that it's not um, the, the the SR, the Super Rare, or whatever, because this card is so good. Um, apparently, there's also a ruling where you can actually um, just, I guess it has double strike, like when you play it, but you don't blow up anything. So in order to blow up the cards, you have to discard a card from your hand, but you can just, um, you know, it can just have double strike, dual attack. I think that's really busted. I thought you had to discard a card to blow up something uh, to give it, you know, the, the double strike. Um, I know it always has dual attack, but I don't know. I think that seems too good. Uh, next up, we have King Cold, um, you know, Father of the Emperor. I'm running three. I, I like it. Um, again, it's non Guinea Force, so it just kind of helps you um, kind of tempo um, the matchups when you have to, you know, play against something. So let's say, you know, and especially knowing that your your opponent has to play around a lot of your stuff. So, you know, you have energy open. You know, they can probably think, okay, it might be the Eraser Gun, it might be, you know, the King Cold or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of different things that your opponent will have to try and play around, especially when you're running Crusher Ball and Clo Cold Bloodlust. So, it's something that, uh, another card that I felt like your opponent will have to kind of play around, and I really like it a lot, you know, being, like having a revenge card uh, in the deck too, uh, can really be helpful, especially knowing that they attack with something, uh, you drop King Cold, tap a, the other rested unit, um, they it gets redirected to him it kills it it kills them and then you know you have uh opening for mecha freezer so i think it's a pretty pretty good card um next up i have uh sashimi the loyal warrior i i really like this card um because it's like my backup to mecha freezer where mecha freezer would destroy the rested um this just keeps them uh, tapped so if you have multiple copies you can just keep locking your opponent down and kind of just uh, going for face so I, I really like it. Obviously, getting rid of them is a lot better, but that's why I have this kind of like my backup. And for the most part, a lot of people, you know, probably wouldn't really expect it. So it's a good way to kind of just lock it down if you don't have the mecha freezer. So it's kind of like a backup. Uh, next up, I have here four staples of the Dodoria Emperor Servant. Um, obviously, it's four staples pretty much in almost every deck in terms of like these type of cards. Um, what I've been noticing, even if people play three or something like that, I play four. Not just because it's really good, but it's also searchable by Avenge and Frieza. So that's like a huge plus. That's like a lot of value right there. Uh, next up, I play for Kui. Kui? Oh, I'll tell you how good Kui is, okay? The reason why I like Kui a lot is because he's the only blocker in the game, especially like a early drop blocker in the game that has um, higher than 10,000 power. And this is very relevant against a lot of decks, especially Vegeta. So... Uh, if turn one, you know, Vegeta does his, like, um, crit thing or whatever, that's fine. And then you decide to, like, on turn two, drop Kui. Now they have to play around it because now if Vegeta uses his uh, ability to deal one damage to get the crit, and you're attacking, and the Vegeta player is attacking, um, you can just block with Kui. And if he doesn't combo, then, you know, you just saved yourself a damage. He lost a damage, and it's uh, it really can trouble some... Uh, Vegeta for sure so it forces them to kind of um, I would say overextend but extend a little bit further 
to use um, whatever hand to basically try and get over the Kui, where you would just simply, you know, just drop it to save it. Or, you know, you might just, um, you know, get it out with Freeze's call, like, earliest turn one or something like that. So there's a lot of options and uh, a lot of value. I, I like Kui a lot. He's a very good uh, blocker right now, especially in this kind of Vegeta Fiesta that we've been seeing a lot of, and uh, Vegeta deck's doing really well. So if you're playing Golden Freezer, I would highly recommend for Kui. And I think that's the reason why he's also uh, a two-drop blocker, but both of the energy have to be two, because I think he's that good. Next up, for Sui and a four pool. So this is my main selling point with the deck. Um, the reason why I have these kind of vanilla guys in here is because um, late game, you know, since all the leaders, when they awaken, have 15 power, you know, it just kind of put pressure on your opponent and uh, really just forces them to at least discard a card or otherwise take a damage, especially late game. It's, it's very, very helpful. Um, and it also helps, you know, if your opponent goes like turn three of Salem Vegeta and then you can just counter with the these guys as a counterattack. So it helps a lot just to put that pressure on. Sure, it doesn't do um, like get rid of like bigger battle cards, but that's why your mecha freezes is there. And that's why your... Uh, um, uh, Sashimi or whatever the loyal warrior that's why he's in there as well because they did to kind of lock down um, later in the game but these guys can really help put pressure especially if you just kind of have them sit there and your opponent um, doesn't get rid of them when you kind of are trying to go for like a really big um, push they help a lot because when your opponent awakens you have something that can hit it and still force damage through so that's why my main selling point is instead of the Guinea Force guys, I have uh, four of each um, uh, 15k vanilla. Next up, two Guinea Force Raccoon. So I am running Guinea Force allies um, or Guinea Force um, battle cards. I know it's again says non Guinea, but uh, the reason for it is because one, they're searchable and um, I think they're really, really good against certain decks. So Raccoon, I have against the Vados matchup. So, uh, you know, it just. They basically, Vados can't kill it on its first side. Even when the Goku promo comes out and they play it, it only goes up to 15 and Rukum is 16. So they did it on purpose. So good uh, design by Bandai for sure. Thinking ahead like that. Knowing how the game works and kind of making cards, um, you know, whatever like ratios and whatever scaling that they have, they know what it is. And that's why Rukum is really good because if it was 15, it wouldn't matter because, you know, you just combo and get rid of it. But 16 again, just having that 100 difference or whatever, it makes a, a whole lot of um, change in play for a lot of decks and a lot of players. Uh, so two of that, because again, it's searchable. So basically on demand, if I need it, I can just get it. Uh, same thing with Birder. Um, two Birder because again, it can restand so they can't, uh, they can't just attack it unless they're playing Vados or some kind of card that attacks active mode cards. Uh, with that being said, um, Birder, he, again, likes, again, puts pressure. So you can have him sit there. And let's say if your opponent said, you know, um, like, like six damage or something like that. Um, you know, you have a Birder and like maybe two Birders, a pool and Frieza. You know, you can go Birder, Birder. Um, or whatever the case may be, kind of force him to awaken, you know, and then, you know, go in with the 15k and just kind of put more damage on there. Um, next up, 4 Vengeance Frieza, probably the best card in the entire deck. Um, as you can see, I try to have a lot of viable targets for it. So I have uh, 4, 8, 10, 12, um, 16, 20 targets, I believe. So it's a, a card that I really want to kind of center my deck around to make sure I had a lot of targets for it. And to make sure that I always kind of would net something from it just because um, it has so much value, especially the amount of times that, you know, you can just go Avenger and Freezer, sack it off, Freezer's Call, Avenger and Freezer again, get something else. So this card really gets you that hand advantage that you need combined with the Freezer leader um, really opens up for a lot of plays. So, uh, you know, for the most part, like this card is just really, really good. And uh, yeah, probably like one of the best cards in the deck, you know, thins out your deck to get what you need to make sure you get your Mecha Freezes and see the cards that you need early on. Very good. Uh, next up, three uh, Raccoon Eraser Gun. Again, I have three because, you know, the cost is pretty high, but um, if you have to use one early for energy, you know, you at least have some backup. So um, I kind of went this way with splitting it with King Cold because even though they're both four drops and in most situations, Raccoon Eraser Gun, it might be better. If your opponent knows how to play around it, um, it, 
I would say it loses value, but you know, what the card's supposed to do would make you play around it. Um, I just felt at the same time, if you needed like a body on the board or something like that, you know, that's why you have the the emperor, or if you have an established board, you know, you have the eraser gun. So it's basically based on your um, your situation at the time. Uh, you can choose which one you want to use. Same thing with the Mecha Frieza and the Sashimi. Even though Mecha Frieza will always be your go-to, like, 4-drop for the most part. Let's say if you're trying to save it for something else, you know, you might just lock them down with the Sashimi and then um, play the Mecha Frieza. Next up for Frieza's Call, another probably good card in deck. If anything, that should probably be the best card because that gets you Revenge Frieza. Uh, just Rota for Frieza army cards. It's so good. Being able to get Birder. Like a two drop on turn one, untap it or raccoon, make it sixteen so they can't kill it. Or Kui, or um, you can even do like fancy stuff like getting the, the Doria out, and um, you know you can still combo with later from the field to get its effect. Or a pool or any of the. So it's just a good utility card all around. Highly, highly, um, obviously a staple in Frieza Frieza decks or anything um, that plays Frieza army cards. Uh, just amazing. Four Crusher Ball because we hate Beerus, so that card would never get its effect ever in this deck. It just doesn't. And uh, between that and the Cold Bloodlust, like Beerus, like what's a Beerus? You know, it's this card is just so good, especially when timed right. You know, you obviously save it for the later part of the game when your opponent uses a lot of energy to bring out something big, and then you just counter with the Crusher Ball. It's just so much value. And then that sets you up for the Mecha Frieza or the Sashimi or just attacking over it. You know, the Crusher Ball is just so so good so uh, when, I, when I have it I feel so safe especially with um, Frieza's ability to untap energy is a huge plus again um, something I really uh, would definitely if you're not playing 4 that's fine you know I can see people playing 3 I just like 4 just for the security of it same thing with Cold Bloodlust um, where in certain decks you know um, Cold Blood again certain decks I should say Cold Bloodlust really um, really helps out a lot more than maybe Crusher Ball Especially if your opponent plays a battle card that gains, like, that lets them draw cards or something like that. Uh, Cold Bloodlust kind of just stops it. Again, for all for one cost. So when you have, like, at least one energy open, your opponent really has to think around, like, okay, what card do I want to play first to bait out this? Or would they have that? Or, you know, whatever the case may be. So it's really, really good. Um, again, it, you kind of... I, the reason I like this deck a lot is because it kind of forces your opponent to kind of play around and kind of... Um, really have to think and it lets you kind of manipulate like how you kind of want to dictate uh have them dictate the play and stuff like that so you know it's um it frees i mean he doesn't care about his uh minions that's why he sacks him off and he's just uh and gets stronger and stuff but uh again i really like the deck and last but not least um two bad ring laser again this card uh is a good way to just kind of i wouldn't say close it out because your opponent can still combo but it causes them to lose one energy so uh if you know they have one energy open and they're having weak corrosion and they're thinking that they're safe they're not <laughs> so they always have to be aware of this card you know they have to at least keep two open which a lot of people don't do they just think they're safe with the one because they have four weak corrosion in your hand and i can just tap do all my shenanigans but then you play the bad ring laser on them and then they get locked out of energy so then they can't use any 10k combos and then you just win so this card for what it's worth especially if you can ditch like dead um uh extra cards since they're not doing anything in your hand anyway since you can't combo with them i think um you know it's just a good way to kind of seal out the deal i want to try and fit room for at least one more but um I mean, two has been working out pretty fine for now. So, again, I really like this deck. It's uh, one of my favorite decks in the first set right now. Um, I know because it's kind of like everyone's kind of playing the same thing with Broly and Vegeta. But I've seen just a lot of Ginyu builds. And I um, I wanted to take a non-Ginyu approach because I didn't want to force myself to go against a Beerus and then just lose my board all the time. And, uh, you know, it's just... All that stuff for one six drop to give it double strike it wasn't seem worth to me when i can have value of like a mecha frieza or like a four drop and then still have two left open and um, being able to do a bunch of cool stuff like that so that's it guys that's pretty much my uh, mono yellow non ginyu golden frieza deck so um again with this game you know you can look at the deck list you can copy it which is obviously not a problem because i'm making a video about it um but a lot of it is how you play you know 
a lot of times I see people just, just use Crushable on the first thing that they see. Oh, you know, the first monster, I got to use it. No, you know, save it. You have to be, you have to learn how to be conservative, especially in this deck. This deck, even though it doesn't ramp like blue, it slows down enough where it feels like you're getting um, the energy advantage anyway, in the sense that um, where most decks, you know, outside of blue, you just play one energy at a time. This deck has the tools to slow things down, so you're able to catch up even if your opponent kind of ramps faster because you have ways to control the, the board. So... Um, and it's, again, it's just a good overall um, deck with utility, defense with the um, with the quees, um, especially with your crusher ball and cold bloodlust and stuff like that to slow your opponent down. Um, offensive tools like you know Mecha Frieza and all this like cool tech. So it's definitely um, not an easy deck to uh, pick up simply because you have to make sure that you're timing things right and really knowing the matchups and knowing uh what cards to get especially with freezer's call maybe a lot of times you know i would use freezer's call to get a vengeance freezer but then i wouldn't even use freezer's effect to pop off the avenger freezer sometimes i just leave it there so not all the time you kind of want to just okay i can use freeze ability just because i can not really like you know you have to know when to use it and um how it would be most effective pretty much you know even though you might get a free draw and uh you might um let's say you know get whatever the case may be um it all depends again it really all depends sometimes um you know if i'm using freeze call for revenge and freeza and get its effect then i'll pop it off because they can just attack it but if i just play it for my hand sometimes i wouldn't even sack it off with freeza so there's a lot of like um cool combos again you can do just because you know you can attack with um let's say like a pool to like especially if it's like late game and then use golden freezer's effect to sack that off to untap two to play another one and then do some other stuff or you can do a lot of crazy chains with this deck a lot of crazy chains so um again i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any questions again the deck list will be down in the description below and uh, that's pretty much it so until next time z warriors remember to like comment and subscribe don't forget to also uh join the dragon ball super group channel main channel and then i'm also going to be meeting with um the uh producer of dragon ball super card game as well as uh uh the guy who um handles products and stuff so it's gonna be really awesome and uh hopefully i can try and get an interview with them and i'm they're also bringing their decks which is really awesome so we're gonna definitely have that recorded hopefully uh, if they allow me to and that'll be really cool for you guys to see you know me playing the the you know the I guess the guy who, I would say guy who made it, but I don't know. Like he's just up there. He's definitely, um, he makes cards and stuff like that. So it's really going to be interesting to see um, what decks he brings and uh, how he plays and um, maybe give me more insight in terms of how they design cards because it's going to be the R&D team. So um, at least a portion of it. So it's going to give me a better idea of um, maybe like your play style in terms of like, um, how they think certain cards fare or how they kind of work or whatever the case may be especially like being mecha freezer being how it is where it's just like okay just discard it you don't have to discard a card to give it to dual attack i think it's a little bit too good i think you know should at least discard a card and pop something to get it um but that's uh, another uh, discussion for another day but uh a lot of good things happen in the game i think the game's actually right now out in target so um if you guys need some target packs and you can't get product anywhere definitely check out target they should be having i've seen a lot of posts on the group and people have been pulling stuff from target so i'm going to probably check it out when i get um when i get home just to see if they have it in my area but definitely check it out in your area because i see a lot of people getting it and uh that's pretty much it so until we wait for some really cool stuff with op and everything you know this game is really shaping up to be um is ready growing fast so it's it has a so much potential for sure and uh i thank you guys for watching until next time z warriors mr waffles out side note i forgot to tell you guys don't forget arg philly is happening this weekend um dragon ball super is going to be there um we're going to have an event a box event at friday at uh, 1 p.m and sunday at 11 a.m so I'll have all that information for sure in the description down below. So if you guys are in that area um, or like in the uh, uh, East Coast, like Tri-State area, whatever, definitely it's worthwhile checking out. I'll be teaching people how to play and we'll be having an event. Uh, best two out of three format, sideboard. Um, I think uh, probably 45 minute rounds or so uh, just to keep things moving. So um, with that being said, hopefully you guys can make it out or if you might know someone to make it out, um, just tell them about it and spread the word. Till next time, guys. Bye.